good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for joining us. This is Inspiration Tuesdays. My name is Kim Schofield, and thank you for joining us. Today, I'm talking with Bill Luckett, co-founder of the Ground Zeroes Blues Club. Bill, welcome to Inspiration Tuesdays. Thank you, Kim. It's a fairly early morning here in Mississippi, but it uh, looks like a bright sunny day there where you are at the UAE. Well, now you're in Clarksdale, Mississippi, right? That's right. It's a small town about uh, 75 miles south of Memphis, Tennessee, uh, about an eight-hour drive east from here to Atlanta, Georgia, about six hours north of New Orleans, and uh, it's in the part of the state of Mississippi that we uh, sort of affectionately call the Mississippi Delta. I'll tell you one little thing I just thought of that describes the Delta pretty well. It says, the Mississippi Delta, where cotton is king, corn liquor is queen. Every night is Saturday night. Every day is payday. Two vacations a year, six months apiece. The richest land, the poorest people, but I changed that word poorest to the greatest people, so that's what I think. So anyway, that's a pretty descriptive of where I am. As uh, Tennessee Williams, the playwright, wrote in one of his famous plays called Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, the Mississippi Delta has the most fertile land this side of the Valley Nile. That's how he describes it. Wow. So, so how long have you been living in Clarksville, Bill? Well, uh, like I understand uh, you, I was born in Texas, but I came here at eight weeks old. So I've been here over 72 years. You were the mayor of Clarksville, right? I, I was for a four-year term. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know how big my accomplishments are, but they are many and varied, I'll put it that way. I know The Economist did a story on me a few years back, just kind of calling me a renaissance man, whether that's deserved or not. But uh, I think one of the questions you posed to me uh, in written form was, what about you don't people know? And I think a lot of people don't realize that I wear so many hats. A lot of people know me as a lawyer, a lot of people as a real estate developer. I like to save old buildings and houses. Uh, I'm an adjunct professor at the University of Mississippi where I teach law courses and entrepreneurship courses. I uh, also uh, am chairman and president of Ground Zero Blues Club, which is a highly acclaimed worldwide branded juke joint here in Clarksdale. So I probably, oh, I'm an actor. I forgot to mention that. I, I've probably forgotten a few other things, but I stay very busy. I tried to model my life after a British uh, poet named Rudyard Kipling. He wrote a poem called If. And it's all about becoming a man. If you can do this, if you can do that. Uh, and two verses I try to live by from that poem, which my mother nicely put in my high school scrapbook, are if you can walk with kings, but not lose the common touch, then you'll be a man. And the other one was that I follow. There are many verses in that poem, but one of them is if you can... Uh, gain 60 seconds of distance run in every unforgiving minute, you will be a man. So I try to multitask and try to be humble in certain ways, but at the same time, I enjoy uh, a lot of varied friends around the world. So uh, it's, it's a good, good poem to follow. I would certainly advise anybody, men and women, to, to read it and take some lessons from it. This sounds like really good words to live by, quite frankly. But I have to ask you, of all the things that you do, acting, teaching, flying, representing clients, listening to the blues, what is it you like to do best? I can't really say I like them all. I, and, I, and I'm always up for another challenge of some kind or another. I, I took a bar exam in Arizona once on a dare from some people I met in the south of France years ago and started visiting with them from Clarksdale, Mississippi to Scottsdale, Arizona, and watched their kids grow up all the way through high school, college, and law school. And 
And the children of this couple that I got to know were uh, finishing up law school and my wife and I were out visiting with them and I asked them what they had on their plate next. And they said, oh, we've got to take the bar exam. And they looked at me and said, and I bet you couldn't pass it. Well, I didn't need another bar exam. I, I had uh, plenty of experience and all that. But on a dare, I went out and took the Arizona bar, just kind of for the fun of it. So I just uh, I love a challenge uh, of different sorts. And so uh, I go for things all the time that I haven't yet experienced. I, I have my single pilot jet rating because I started flying 48 years ago, just small single engine planes and kind of the planes got bigger and faster and more expensive, kind of like boats. Yeah. And uh, finally, uh, uh, Morgan Freeman and I bought a small jet together and both of us got training in it and uh, it was capable of just having one pilot fly it. Most jets need at least two pilots and some need more than that in terms of engineers and navigators and all. But we both got our single pilot jet rating. That was a big accomplishment in my life. I, that flying is probably the most enjoyable thing I've done. I took so many solo trips on business that I would just yearn to have had somebody else in the cockpit with me to enjoy some of the scenery I've seen over my lifetime up at altitude. It's just a very a pleasant experience. I've always enjoyed that, but I enjoy just about everything I do. A uh, good performance in a movie is fun. Uh, backing off of a building that I've saved from destruction and and then you know satisfied clients they give you some uh, I guess mental enjoyment for a while but but backing off of a structure or a house or something that I've managed to keep from a wrecking ball and turn it into something that's valuable is uh, gives me a lot of satisfaction. I grew up as a house painter so I knew construction pretty well too and so I stick to that with things I know and then challenge myself with things I don't. So, well, tell us about the Ground Zero Blues Club. Why did you name, name the club Ground, Ground Zero? Well, Ground Zero, by a dictionary definition, has two primary meanings, the, the phrase Ground Zero. It means the place where a nuclear explosion occurred or the point of beginning of something. I was saddened by the fact that the World Trade Tower uh, issues on 9-11 got to that location got to be called ground zero. In fact, I was on a boat ride around the Hudson River once and the docent on the boat said, I don't know why they ever called this site ground zero. It doesn't even meet the definition. And I went down and applauded him for that because we were open before that happened under the name ground zero blues club. Clarksdale and the surrounding area have been referred to as ground zero, <clears throat> excuse me, for blues music for decades. So the title was fitting. This is, this is the part of the Mississippi Delta where the concentration of great Delta blues musicians uh, grew and, and spread from here to points north primarily, Memphis, St. Louis, Chicago, Detroit, and around the country. Uh, but we've had uh, We've long had the reputation of being ground zero for blues, so it was just a fitting name to give this club that uh, Morgan and I decided to open back in the uh, latter part of 2000. We got open May 11 of 01, so uh, we've been 20 years in the business now. Are there any blues musicians okay. that first played at ground zero and then, then, then went on to become famous? Well, the main one would be a young man named Kingfish. His real name is Chris Stone Ingram. And he was a child prodigy guitar player. He's about 21 years old now. He started playing our club at 12 years old, having been trained right next door at the Delta Blues Museum, which has a youth program. Actually, it's for the young and the young at heart. But they teach uh, a lot of the different musical disciplines like guitar, keyboard, drums, bass, all of that. And he's probably the best known who started at our club and grown from there. He was nominated for a Grammy last year. He's on tour all the time now. He's played all over Europe and a lot of the world. And so his nickname is Kingfish, given to him by one of his teachers years ago. And uh, so he would be an example of that. Now, 
Uh, there are others that are lesser known, but had their start in our club, an excellent drummer named Lee Williams. And there, there, there are others as well, but Kingfish would be the primary one. I think that's, that's really outstanding that uh, your, your, your business, your uh, ground zero has contributed to the success of, uh, of local musicians. One thing of interest I think you'd like to hear about is the fact that <clears throat> while we've had a number of well-known musicians play at our club from George Thorogood to uh, Pine Top Perkins to Willie Nelson to Gene Simmons or Kiss, I mean, we just had lots and lots of famous musicians come through there. But what we've seen in the last few years is the older rock and blues musicians have been bringing their children to our club and to our little town of Clarksdale to show their children where the older guys' music came from in that sense of the word. Robert Plant of Led Zeppelin has brought his two sons. Gene Simmons has brought his son. Ozzy Osbourne has brought his son. Paul Simon has brought his son. Willie Nelson has sent his sons. I didn't see them, but I heard they have come through. Uh, it's just no telling who you're going to run into in, in our premises at any given time. I've walked in twice and Elvis Costello was there. So Dan Aykroyd has been there. And probably a lot of people who've been there, I don't even know they were there. They just trying to drift through incognito not to draw attention to themselves. So we're proud of the fact that a lot of the recognition is now being shown for the old Delta blues artist and the origin of so many of these great rock and roll and blues bands. Uh, this this where they derive their inspiration. Uh, everybody from Elvis Presley was covering blues songs that not much of the world knew about it. His famous song, Hound Dog, was really a blues song recorded before he ever recorded it by a lady named Big Mama Thornton. Uh, Don't Be Cruel, another one. Uh, uh, the Rolling Stones, uh, they just copied virtually a lot of our music and reintroduced us to it. Eric Clapton pay, pays homage to uh, Robert Johnson, the guy who sold his soul to the devil here at the crossroads. So we've got a deep, rich history of music in this area that is, I call it, America's gift to the world. And it all started right here in this Mississippi Delta. Well, Bill, thank you so much for joining us today. You are truly an inspiration. A public servant and entrepreneur, actor, pilot, founder of Ground Zero, super lawyer. It was such a pleasure to interview you today. Thank you well, so much. Well, Kim, thank you for the opportunity. <clears throat> you know, it really is heartening for me to know that I'm doing an interview with somebody in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, I mean, that just kind of points up, I think, the fact that, that we do have international reputation now. I've done interviews now and with several foreign country correspondents now and uh, a lot of magazine press and all of that. And it's just good to see us kind of pull something out of the ashes and turn it into something that's, that's just offering the world a wonderful venue. So thank you for having me and spreading the word around the world in your program. It was my pleasure. Thank All you right. so much. Thank you. This is Kim Schofield. Thank you for joining us. Stay well, be safe, and go forth and inspire. <laughs>